Hi, Graham of Penguin Motors. Here's part two on the Cadrum build. Full crossflow engine, 1600cc originally. Now this one has been bored out in 1700cc. Today, we're gonna to do a quick check on piston to boil clearance. The reason being that the block was machined by an outside company. The pistons are unknown, so I just, before I start to reassemble it, I wanna check that the clearances are good. All right, there's many ways to check piston to bore clearance, but in this instance, what we're going to do, we're going to take our bore gauge, which is actually used for checking wear in the bore in terms of variation in size. This doesn't actually give you a size, but it will show a variation. So if a bore was tapered, i.e. smaller at the bottom of the top, we would see it as we slide the gauge up and down. So I've already preset the gauge. We've got a zero read in there. So we have, a, we have a size, I don't know what it is, but it's zero on there. We take that out, we put it down, and I'm gonna take a micrometer. And again, the size isn't relevant, but I'm gonna adjust it to fit the skirt. So it's a nice snug fit across the piston skirt. I then take the micrometer and place it on a bore gauge. And if we were to zoom in on the reading on the bore gauge, we have around about three and a half thousandths of an inch, which will be the perfect clearance for a forged piston. Here we have the nose of the crankshaft with the original single row timing chain sprocket that I've already pulled off of the puller. We're going to replace it with this here double row. But before we fit it up, we're going to carry out a little machining operation to the crankshaft. If I stand these brackets next to each other, you can see the gap between the inner edge of the inner sprocket and the end of the pulley where it touches the crankshaft on a double row is smaller than it is on a single row. You can just put the double row straight on the crank and press it in to place. But if you do that, the bulky rivets on the end of the chain chew into the edge of the number one, number one main bearing journal. It, it's not major, but it's better if we don't have the chain chewing lumps out the end of the crank. So the next step I'm gonna do is put the crankshaft in a lathe and machine a small bit off the end of the main journal just to allow clearance to the rivets. It has no effect on the strength of the crankshaft whatsoever or the bearing surface or there's no detriment at all, but it it is much of an improvement in so much as we're reducing the amount of swarf metal shavings we put in the oil and potentially we're helping the life of the chain itself.